It says you are live. Mm -hmm. All right. So let me hope that this one is working. You, you, you want to have somebody check it for you again? Yes, someone is checking now. All right, fingers crossed. Yes, fingers crossed. Try again. All right, so I'm seeing one person on the live now. Whoever good, that good. is, we are good. testing and waiting on just one good. person to start. So if you can hear us, just drop a comment down below to say that you can hear us and we will start. All right, so I'm seeing three. Just need a confirmation, please. Just drop a comment below to say that you can hear us and we will start the discussion. yes we can easy entertainment thank you so much so we are live thank you so much for that confirmation all right so this is our first live here on just sharika and i just want to thank the four persons who are on for taking time out of your busy busy easter schedule right lockdown and all to be here with us on this live on just sharika so I will start off by saying that this is not our typical discussion. We will not be having our typical discussion on real estate and buying houses. We're going to be switching it up a little bit different today. So stay with us and stick around for what we have in store for you today. All right. So as you can see, we have a very beautiful young lady with us today who will be our interviewee. All right. So I'm just going to jump right into the discussion so we have a jamaican esthetician that's how it's pronounced esthetician yes <laughs> esthetician all right so i stand corrected a jamaican esthetician and some of you are probably wondering who that is so our guest will speak a little about herself and her role and what she does before we get into the discussion so just to let you know that we'll be talking a little bit about beauty and taking care of our skin right, all right yes, so right. just to let you know so just in case any men are out there <laughs> i hope the conversation is not too biased towards the women because men you have skin too exactly and you need to take care of yourself exactly. too so don't feel that it's not about you it is we all have skin and our skin is the largest organ right right yeah. And with all the madness happening in the world right now, we need to take care of ourselves. So we're taking the time this evening to self-care and we'll be talking out with a specialist in the skincare era, right? All right, so we're going to jump right over. So our special guest is Miss Nikita Wilson. And if any of you have been watching, you know Samia Wilson too, right? <laughs> but no, it's not my sister. All right, but... Miss Nikita Wilson, Jamaican esthetician, as I would have said before, is our special guest here on Just Sharika, and we'll be mm -hmm. talking all things skincare and beauty. So welcome, Miss Nikita. How are you? I am not doing bad. Thanks again for the introduction, for the formal introduction, Sharika. And as she had stated before, I am Nikita Wilson, and I have been an esthetician for over five years now, ongoing. And um, the feel this field that we're in as she was stating the skin is the largest organ of the body and the skin is this is this is pretty much the only skin we have so we have to take care of it i'm not saying that you should end all your bank account on it but fear is fear in terms of you know dishing out the fairness that you need to look after your skin so this is why we're here on this live tonight to talk about the importance of enforcing you know the, your skin's health as stated before it's, it's the largest organ of the body it's the only skin we'll ever have and yes. it really just help to define who we are it's yes really contribute to our main image so right yes this is why we're here tonight and we're going to be talking about that okay beautiful and as when you meet somebody the first thing you see skin yes right? so we need to love the skin we're in and take care of the skin right. that we're in so just to let you know if you have any skincare questions that you can post them down below and nikita is here to answer as best as possible right. all right so we're going to jump into the question i have a list of questions from some persons that mm -hmm. um you know want to know yes. a few things and a few questions of my own so we're just going to jump right into it and we're going to start off by talking about skin types 
Mm -hmm. I know, um, Nikita, that there are varying skin types out there. Yes, yes. Can yes. you tell us what they are and how can persons, all right? So say, for instance, if I have a particular skin type, how, how do I care for that particular skin type? Okay, absolutely. No problem. So there are four main types of skin. And we're talking about the normal skin, combination skin, oily and uh, dry skin. Anything else apart from that is a skin condition. Like, for instance, if you have dry skin, mm -hmm. it can be affiliated with dehydrated skin. Dehydrated skin wouldn't be a skin type. That would be a condition that falls under dry skin. So the four main types is dry, combination, uh, oily, and normal skin. Now, if it's a case where you're having oily skin like myself here, I suffer from oily skin, that can be a bittersweet situation where you know, your skin is secreting a lot of oil to the surface. So therefore, you're going to be prone to break out easier than anybody else, you know, because no, right. there, there's so much oil on the surface. It feels like a dirty magnet, you know, little pollutants in the atmosphere, little dust come across and it sticks to the skin. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that because your skin is constantly secreting its own oil to keep it tattered, mm -hmm. you have a lesser chance of experiencing fine lines and wrinkles. But once you have this type of skin, you know that you'll have to get your, your acne prone fighting ingredients some ingredients like salicylic acid some ingredients like your alpha arbitin acid well not your alpha arbitin but your self sodium sulfacetamide acid some ingredients like bpo these specific ingredients were created to combat the the, um, the potential growth of bacteria that causes breakouts into the skin now if you have oily skin sorry normal skin i wouldn't want to say you have perfect skin but it's close to perfect you have okay. little yeah, man, you have, you have little to, to, to no pore exposure. Your pores are not too small, they're not too large. The skin doesn't sec secrete too much oil and it's not too dry. Once you have a skin type like that, you, you want to keep it as, as such. So you, you get regular hydrating products or milk mm -hmm. base or gel base product that will just help to manage or to maintain the amount of oil the skin is already secreting, given that it's not too much and it's not too little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm combination skin this is where it gets really really pivotal very crucial oh, because yes. we're now dealing with two different skin types right mm -hmm. some persons might experience dryness on the outside that's me that's me that? i have yes. combination yes tell me and how to speak as well no when you have this skin type you have to pay attention to the products that you're oh. getting because it's not a one size fits all especially in this situation your skin's current current characteristic is pretty much telling you listen there's two of us on this platform and we're not going to work together. One, We're literally <laughs> oil and dry. So you, right. make sure that you get products to target the oily area. Some mm -hmm. people have to, uh, to uh, manage the, 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 the production of oil in that area. A little bit of niacinamide, a little bit of zinc or green tea helps with oil overproduction of oil in the skin. Right? And if you have dryness in, in, in say you have dryness on the outside here, you want something that's going to be boosting the collagen in that area, boosting that sebaceous glands that can help the skin to start producing some oil to keep that dry, that area um, saturated. Because once the skin is too dry, then you're prone, mm -hmm. to, to, it's prone to age very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I'm moving on to our dry skin now, even that we're talking about dry. Dry right. skin. The good thing about dry skin is that when your skin is dry, you have a less chance of getting breakout, but there's still a, a, a con to this, right? Because now you're prone to, your skin is prone to age faster because you're having um, premature fine lines, premature wrinkles, dryness, flakiness, itchiness, inflammation. All this will have to happen. And I like to use, I like to compare or use a plant as an example. Right? I like to use this, this analogy. When you have a plant at your house and if you take too long to water that plant, what happened to that plant? It died. Yes, it, it, it gets dries, it cracks, yes. it, it's next to dying. It's right. Everything applies to the skin. This is why I always tell my clients, it doesn't matter what your skin type is, make sure that you keep the skin hydrated. Every skin type needs hydration. Right. right. You want to keep the skin moisturized and saturated. The thing is that the difference between oily skin and dry skin when it comes down to moisturizing and hydrating, dry skin needs more moisturization, more, more oil-based cream right. to keep more emollients to keep the oil into the skin versus um oily skin that needs more of a hydration because right. once the skin is secreting too much oil to the surface you're pretty mm -hmm. this is a sign that you're losing a lot of oil from under the epidermal layer right. and the skin can go into freak mode and it hits a condition that is called the um trans epidermal water loss condition this is where your skin is losing water from under the epidermal layer and even though the, the top part might, might be greasy you're losing a lot under the epidermal layer and it causes the skin to 
to go into freak mode and it causes a lot of cluggage in your pores as well so you want to create an, an an environment for your skin to strive and this is where the whole hydration and moisturization come in persons be like what you me have oily skin me not put no more oil or, or saturate nothing the difference right. is that once you have oily skin you want to make sure that you're using uh water-based products humectants is what they would call it like your olive gel your hyaluronic acid um stuff like this that will the saturated skin, but it won't cause cluggage into the pore, given that you're okay. already oily skin versus dry skin. Okay. Versus dry skin, where it is so dehydrated that the hydration alone won't be enough. You want mm -hmm. oil based products that mm -hmm. will seal in the moisture into the skin. You know, or mm -hmm. persons will use some, some occlusive on the skin, meaning that anything that is petroleum based. Mm -hmm. um it seals off moisture into the skin and it, pre it, pre it prevents water from leaving or entering into that specific area so when first so are you saying that the use of petroleum is good to be placed on the skin uh, the vaseline the vaseline is not vaseline. bad yeah man the vaseline in particular because you do have some petroleum that are that, that can cause cluggage on the pores so we're not good okay yes but the vaseline is not bad to, to, to seal in moisture into the mm -hmm. skin. I'm not saying you should you should go <laughs> you should go damp kill the face with all all of the grease now it can't come out. <laughs> but it does help if you're suffering from ridiculously dry skin, especially if you're in an environment where it's mm -hmm. cold in the winter time, okay. it just pulls the moisture from the skin and just dehydrates the skin. That's the best time to use your petroleum okay. based products, right? All right. So for me, I know I have combination skin. Mm -hmm. So like my forehead tends yes. to get dry. Yes. And my cheeks are a little bit oily. So you mentioned hydration. And just to throw this out there, remember your skin is also a reflection of what you are putting inside of your body. Yes. Yes. So to stay hydrated, yes. even though we're talking about skin care, ensure that you're eating well because what you eat reflects and show on your skin. Yeah, I couldn't so agree It doesn't that. matter the amount of products out there that you put on your skin if you are not eating well it's going to show all right so on the topic of hydration nikita so mm -hmm. just throwing that out there best hydration for your skin internally is water yes. so ensure that you're drinking enough water because yes. if you're not drinking enough water your skin going to look not yes, so well. I, I, I would love to kind of not that not to get too technical but to kind of explain how that really works no the skin is a part of the excretory system as you stated right. it, whatever it doesn't like it pushes out and once we consume enough water what mm -hmm. we is that the water hydrates our organs and once it hydrates mm -hmm. our, our organs then mm -hmm. those water molecular cells are now secreted to the surface of the skin so not mm -hmm. only are you you are hydrating the skin but your overall body is being rejuvenated mm -hmm. and refreshed right. it sounds cliche when person says drink your water yeah it literally helps but it's not it does it help it literally helps it does help to minimize right. the breakout especially if, if you're yes. that consume a lot of dairy and sugar you right. want to turn up your water intake to really right. cut down what's going on into the skin yes okay so let us talk now about um products what product would you recommend and we are not leaning towards any brand all right yes we're just having a conversation here so mm -hmm. based on your clients that you would have seen over the years and maybe your own self yes. in terms of hydration what are maybe the top two or top three if you can get um three what are the top three products on the counter products that you okay. would say works when well yeah when i'm talking about hydration are mm -hmm. I have to bear in mind. I have to bear in mind whenever I have a new client. See, I have a new client in particular now. And she's new to the skincare world. She's new to, mm -hmm. to using products. You want to be mindful of that because you don't know how the skin is going to be to be reciprocating to these products. So you want to slowly get the skin into the groove. So in terms mm -hmm. of hydration, my go-to hydrator would be anything that is olive based, olive vera gel based. Because aloe vera. It's natural humectant. This is a natural form of moisturizer. Mm -hmm. It gives us little to no irritation onto the skin. And it also helps with any form of irritation or inflammation that you might have mm -hmm. prior to using this product. So if it, if if it's not um the, uh, the aloe vera gel, then mm -hmm. it would be something mild like um I like the CeraVe moisturizer. It's very very mild. Mm -hmm. I really like the CeraVe mm -hmm. moisturizer, and I also like the niacinamide serum in the ordinary. 
it's not necessarily okay. a moisturizer. It, it's a form of serum, but it mm -hmm. does hydrate the skin. It does prevent the evaporation of hydration out of the skin. So it does help to keep moisture into the skin. So I can talk for those three because I've tried. Right. Okay. All right. So um, I know a lot of persons, especially for me, um, I have to be very careful about what I put on my skin because I realize a lot of the over-counter products don't work. Don't and work, so work. they don't work. Well, at least for me, they don't work. And so I tend to do a lot of DIY. So I, I make my own um, lotion. I make my own hair oils. Um, so in terms of DIY, DIY, is there any home remedy, any home plant or something that you would recommend that is good? You mentioned aloe. I guess that is yes. one yes, that, is that one. persons can use. Yes. The natural um, persons out there. I would be a liar if I if if I was, you know, an anti-DIYer. Because I used to, this, this, yes. this is how it pretty much started for me, you know. Right. Experimenting and using myself literally as the lab rock. Getting burner patch here. Irritated there all over until I finally got it together. Got it right. And went to school and, and get, got educated. There's not much that I recommend in, in this particular area, but there is a few that can definitely help. Apart from the aloe, I recommend mm -hmm. using some honey. Honey is also a natural yes. like the aloe vera gel. And yes. the manuka honey, there's this brand. This is a manuka honey in particular. It is a biomedical type of honey. And it, it, I guess it's a little bit on the expensive side, but it's very good in terms of um, hydrating the skin, in terms of helping with the anti-aging issues as well. The manuka honey is good. Oats, anything that's oats-based, helps mm -hmm. with inflammation, helps with soothing and calming the skin. And my go-to is green tea. Green tea is a natural form of antioxidant. Mm -hmm. Yes, it simply means that it helps with fighting off free radicals. You know, when the skin damages the skin, um, the sun mm -hmm. damages the skin and cause those discoloration causes the um the liquid peroxidation process where your your whiteheads or your mm -hmm. ones become oxidated and they turn into blackhead the mm -hmm. antioxidants help with those so the green tea the, mm -hmm. hose, the honey and the olive oil gel is really my go-to okay definitely play I love the honey. <laughs> yes, yes, yes yes it yes. does moisturize your skin and you feel all glowy yeah, and nice nice honey bath. Bath. <laughs> yes, yes. So much. <laughs> yes, I enjoy making that one. Yes, you do feel <laughs> luxurious <laughs> at the end of it. <laughs> All right, so thanks for that. So we have listed some homemade remedies that you can use to help with moisturizing and hydrating your skin. So we're going to move on to the next question. I know a lot of persons, especially in their teens and early adulthood life, so in your early 20s, maybe early 30s, a lot of persons struggle a lot with acne. All right. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us what acne is and some ways in which persons can prevent acne before it happens? And if you do get it, how can you treat it? Okay. So what, what was it, the second question? Prevent. Okay. okay what okay. is acne? How you prevent and treat? Okay. Okay. So acne is pretty much... It is a chronic condition. It's not something that can be healed completely, but it can mm -hmm. be managed and controlled. This is a condition that is really caused by both external and internal factors. External mm -hmm. meaning that pollutants out of the atmosphere, environmental stresses, you know, mm -hmm. um, we using certain products on our skin can trigger off um, that whole process. Internally meaning that we have hormonal changes in the body, just like what you just stated, and um, that triggers off um, certain oil producing glands in our skin that causes mm -hmm. the body to become unstable and then you know, we have breakouts. But in, in, in a real world, the main cause for acne, I would say in my own words, is bacteria. bacteria. Having a poor cleansing system mm -hmm. and the bit of a bacteria. Also, hyperkeratinization. What do I mean by this? It means that your pore tunnels now, they, they are blocked, they are clogged with dead skin cells mm -hmm. because it's taking a longer time to turn over these skin cells. And uh, and the thirdly is hormonal changes in the body, which we pretty much mm -hmm. have no control over. Stress right, causes right. If you If you don't get enough sleep, poor blood circulation, depression, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. especially for the females, the menstruation cycle causes mm -hmm. a breakout into the skin. So for me, those are the three main. Th that's really what 
compact. So what about the females and the persons out there who use too many different different products is slabbing onto your face? I'm That's what you call break out happy too. Happy you brought that. Let me take yes. the, let me just take the time to say, it. guys, less is more. If it's not necessary, don't use it. Just because you're going to the store and it might look appealing, it might look like it's catering to what you need. If your skin does not need it, leave it alone. Because sometimes we might have some good products working with what we, we want mm -hmm. something else and we bombard mm -hmm. the skin. As I said before, the skin is a part of the excretory system. What, whatever it doesn't like, it pushes out. And it will have allergic reaction to certain products that might have mm -hmm. a fragrance in it. The ingredients might be too harsh, too strong, and your skin doesn't mm -hmm. like it. So if you're having some products that you're using, keep using them. If they're working for you, whatever floats your boat, go with mm -hmm. it less is more you don't want to bombard the skin and then you look you have a clash of the titans on right you want to take it easy and give your skin enough time to digest mm -hmm. each product that you're putting mm -hmm. and, and know what is working for you okay yes. and that was one of my main reasons for not using a lot of the over-the-counter products because i realized some of them were too strong either in whatever ingredients i had in there yes, or the yes. smell because I have a very sensitive nose, so yeah. sometimes I will put something on my face and it it smells too strong. Mm -hmm. And I realize my eyes start to water, my nose start to water. I'm like, mm -mm, it's not <laughs> no. <laughs> so sure. I try to go from um stuff that has little to no odor in there, no smell. Yes, and it's also it, that's best. And how can you know when the products? First thing, persons need to take the time to read ingredients. I, I, yes. I will admit, you won't understand everything that's on the, right. on the on the bottom, but you might see a thing or two that you might understand. In regards to fragrance, you want to look mm -hmm. for the the, the 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 item must be stated fragrance free. That's the only way you're right. sure that there's no fragrance. If it says unscented, there's a chance that that you have scent in there, and it it is just masked by masking agents. They use those stuff to cover the odors in them. And, and that's more chemicals. chemicals. Yes. And once it says hazardous on it, it's straight out saying that they're sent into this. Ooh. So if hazardous? You know the skin, yes, hazardous. So, so they sell hazardous stuff for the skin? That, yeah, in, in the skincare world, that, that would mean that they're, that oh. they're, 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 they're ingredient, they're fragrance in it. And some fragrance contains certain certain ingredients in them that, that right. they a component that can cause toxin into the body that can damage your liver that can damage yes. your organs into the body so i'm always emphasizing and on, on reading stuff doing your research if there's a product that you have your eye on before you go to grab it off the shelf do mm -hmm. first look at the pros oh lord the yes yes and you know i remember at times when my girlfriends used to come and visit me and they used to tell me, oh sharika you're not girly because i don't have all of those girly girly but smell and all that oh. stuff <laughs> When you come to my house, you will see shea butter, coconut oil. Yes. Those are the things that I use and a combination of other stuff. So they're not like, yeah, they can't come to my house to get ready to go anywhere because I have nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I really cannot tolerate the smell. Yeah, not tolerate the smell. No. Like, you, you torture your, 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 your sense of smelling your nostril like that and, and torture yourself. No. Mm -hmm. No. All right, so all right, so we're gonna move on to the next question here. Oh, no. We we we, oh, we weren't finished. Guys. No, we never finish. Oh preventing, lord, preventing, preventing. That, yes, because we yes. want to make sure that persons are taking note and persons yes, are listening. Yes, yes, yes. Crucial information. Moving on to preventing now. Right. Um, How do you prevent acne? You know that saying that says um, prevention is better than cure. Yes. Number one as i said before less is better if you're mm -hmm. if you have a certain amount of products that you're already using you mm -hmm. just stick to, you stick to that agenda next mm -hmm. thing is, what i normally recommend is we spoke about it you have to monitor your water intake you right, have to right. monitor your sugar intake as well because mm -hmm. um once you continue consume so much um high glycemic food sugary food it spikes mm -hmm. up your insulin level once your insulin level spikes up then it causes your sebaceous glands or your oil producing glands to start secreting more oil and causing cluggage into the skin you want to cut down on the alcohol alcohol is diuretic it dehydrates the skin and the body same thing for the cigarette as well um some some good ways to prevent acne is having a, a steady skincare routine i'm not oh. saying you should have one having 14 products 18 16 <laughs> no the bare essentials is your cleanser 
moisturizer and your SPF. Anything else is optional. These are the three must have. No mm -hmm. more have a strong cleansing system. You shouldn't have to be using your toner to remove excessive dirt from your skin. That means that you need to change your cleansing, your cleanser. Your cleanser should be able to clean off your skin properly. Once you cleanse the skin, you moisturize it because you're creating an environment for your skin to strive, right? And mm -hmm. moisturization is like watering a plant for it to grow, to block mm -hmm. it. Then your sunblock, your sunblock prevents your skin from UVA, UVB, right? Do and black people also, need sunblock? Do we need screen block? We're black. We have the melanin. Why right? do we need it? I was not one of these persons. You know? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Studies have shown that... Uh, um, the darkest and the lightest persons get the most sunburn, right? Sunburn is very, uh, sorry, sunblock is very, very crucial. It is no respect of your skin type, your race, okay. none of that stuff, your ethnicity, none of that stuff. It done once you have your skin and you over <laughs> skin, so you're gonna get burnt. It's just that person with, with lighter complexion, it might show a little bit more, they might get a little bit more mm -hmm. tan, a little, a little bit more pink, and you know, mm -hmm. it can burn, but you mm -hmm. get burned too. It might not be as crucial as Jane's burn, but you right. get burned. And it also, once you're overexposed to the sun for more than 10 minutes or so, just directly exposed to the sun, mm -hmm. you are going to be having the burning sensation. Not mm -hmm. You don't literally have to have the burning stinging sensation, but best believe it's damaging the skin and it is mm -hmm. causing premature aging. Okay. Mm -hmm. UV mm -hmm. ray light from the sun causes, it, it, it pretty much leaches the life from the skin. Don't get me wrong, the sun is not bad because it gives us a vitamin D. Vitamin D. Eyes, yes. bones, but you know that you know that saying, anything I want things is just not just too good. Too much of one thing, not yes. good. So, so don't spend all day in the sun. Yes, so somebody is like if you're in the house now, you're closed when nobody can come in there, the mm -hmm. sun is stealing everything that you put on your face. And right, it's, right, it's, right. It's, it's skin from being damaged it's like it's the gate it's the barrier between your skincare routine your mm -hmm. skin and the sun so when the sun is trying to penetrate the skin it bounces off because your sunblock is fully active okay okay mm -hmm. so those are the ways that we can prevent yes ma'am yes yes all right so what about persons who already have it okay for persons who can we treat it yes person that already have it um before you go and uh, go ahead and experiment and and I mean a little experimentation a little experimenting is is that even a word a little experimenting is not is is not bad but if mm -hmm. you have severe acne or ongoing acne is also it's always best to seek professional help so you mm -hmm. can one know your skin type and then mm -hmm. know what products are associated with your skin type now let mm -hmm. me give an example if say I have oily skin and my skin is constantly breaking out breaking out breaking out breaking out then I know that I need some products that will help to to to, to uh, get rid of the acne or to fight um, some anti-acne products rather. Mm -hmm. you know? And I can either do my research or I can either go to a professional to get some help. You know, there are lots of products out there that have a uh, fight acne fighting ingredients. Let, let, mm -hmm. let me list a few. You have the salicylic acid, which is oil soluble. This goes down into your pores and this decongested the decongest the bacteria, kind of breaks mm -hmm. up that mm -hmm. causes congestion and cluggage into the pore you give us an example of what that is since we the, some of us don't know the term the high called what you call it high call what the salicylic acid right give me an example of a product that is that okay all right so you have the polish choice i have a bottle here my bottle is empty let me let me just show you the bottle one minute sure all right guys feel free to leave your questions below if you have any skincare questions i'm seeing a question there from easy entertainment we'll be getting to you as soon as she is finished with this section okay so this is the part this 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 one is finished because i have a new one on the way this is a polish choice two percent salicylic acid the salicylic acid comes in a serum form and it comes right. in like an exfoliator form you know that like it like how you have the scrubs Right, this right. The liquid form of scrub, liquid exfoliator. Okay. But yeah, and this is good because of a person that of oily skin like mine, it right. not only exfoliates the dead skin cells, but it decongests the pores as well. It comes in serum form, mm -hmm. but the best way to get it is in a like in a wash, like a face mm -hmm. wash. Or mm -hmm. in the exfoliator itself, where it stays on the skin and, and mm -hmm. it has enough time to go down in your pores and to decongest your pores. Mm -hmm. Apart from the salicylic acid, we have our tea tree oil here. Tea tree oil, yes. yes. 
this is antifungal, antibacterial. This is very good to use. The thing is that when you're using this, you have to be mindful of the, the, the proportion that you're using. Right. And so that is, it's, yes, it's so, so high nice. on the skin, but mm -hmm. it's very effective. It's very good to have. I, can, mm -hmm. I try not to run out of this. No, right. with the tea tree oil, you want to make sure before you use it, you set it a while ago, you, you dilute it. Right. Dilute, not with water, but with, with a carrier oil. Right. What I mean by a carrier oil, an oil that can be used on the face that won't clog mm -hmm. the pores. Coconut oil. No, no. Jehovah no. oil. No. Coconut oil is good for the body, good for the <laughs> hair shaft, but it causes cloggage on the pores. It's three out of four on the comedogenic scale. Which what? Is the yes, which is a cloggative. No, let me list a few carrier oils that you can use that can go on the face. Your watermelon seed oil, your M mm -hmm. seed oil, your mm -hmm. oba oil, your right. burdock oil, uh -huh. your sunflower oil, safflower oil. These oils are, are less likely to, to, to cause cloggage on the skin. So I'd recommend you use one of those oils to, to mix mm -hmm. it with a little bit of the tea tree oil you put on the affected area where, you, where you're experiencing the breakout. Apart from that, you have sodium sulfacetamide, which is also another, uh, I think this comes in a cream form as well, or a liquid form, should come mm -hmm. in a cream form. This is another acne fighting ingredient that disturbs mm -hmm. the bacteria that causes breakage. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, you have your BPO, which is benzylide peroxide. This also, this is the only active ingredient rather that kills bacteria from the source. Everything is kind of disturb it, lingers it, mm -hmm. you know, but this kills it directly to the source. Why? Because benzylide peroxide is known to, to put wh wherever it's placed, it mm -hmm. brings oxygen to that area. Mm -hmm. So what it means, it just dab it onto the area? Yes. And bacteria cannot thrive in an area where there's oxygen. It thrives in an oxygen-free area. It breeds up in, in somewhere where you have a lot of heat. Or, you know what I mean? It cannot mm -hmm. thrive in an oxygen in an area that is prone to have oxygen. So because okay. the CPO brings oxygen to that specific area, it mm -hmm. kills it directly. So these are a few of the active ingredients that persons can use. And zinc is also good. Zinc and sulfur is also good. Once you mm -hmm. have, once the product has, has some of it in it, you can use it. And apart from all of that, Retinoid is good. Retinoid. Okay. Retinoid is good too for retinoid it has anti-aging properties, anti mm -hmm. and in regards to the anti-acne. And mm -hmm. then the, the bottle here because I threw it away. The different right. brand is a brand called it's an international brand. It's a brand called Different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I think it's a one percent retinoid. That is very good. What I do sometimes, I mix a little bit of this with the tea tree oil and girl when i tell you that that that, that acid vanished like there was none there before it's almost like focus focus yes. so what about persons who tend to pop yes 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 listen listen you see a little bump and yeah try your eye i'm not saying you can't pop it you know but you must know the difference when the acne is ready to be popped and when it's not mm -hmm. if it has if, if it's like a postural acne where you know it's mm -hmm. inflamed around the, the, the um the, the skin around the areas inflamed and then you have a little mm -hmm. Pus coming out of it, mm -hmm. like you can literally see the, the white head pushing out. Mm -hmm. you try your best to safely secrete that. Excrete mm -hmm. that. With, put some cotton swab or tissue around your index finger. Mm -hmm. and pop it. Or if you have a, a metal extractor, you try to pop it. If it's a case where it doesn't have an head, like a, like, mm -hmm. like a cystic, you know those type of mm -hmm. cystic acts mm -hmm. that are under the skin mm -hmm. and they don't have a head, you leave those alone. They're not ready to come up and you can cause. <laughs> the fear scar you can cause indenture into the skin where you cause the tissues to become damaged so when the acne oh. heal, it heals and it forms a dent a dent into the skin so well I, 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 I will not have that problem because girl i don't like person pump i know yes 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 oh. i'm telling you man and i, I oh. that, that is it's really hard sometimes to see the bump and not no, I would see it yes. and find ways to clean it yes. and then eventually it disappears. Because if you pop that bumper, if you pick that area, yes. you're an environment for bacteria to spread. You're breaking yes. down the walls of the skin. And once you break down the walls of the skin, the bacteria is going to be flowing like a nice little river. Mm -hmm. When you're like, let me get this from, let me get this from. The and it can cause carrying. Yes. And that would lead to easy ease entertainment question is he said how can i lighten up the scars fast okay how can you lighten up the scars fast first things first you have to get rid of the fast part because guess what <laughs> this this requires cons i hope he's hearing me i hope she's hearing me this requires consistency and self-discipline that's what's going to get you to your end goal here now they have this thing that says a fast dog is a fast lick 
it's not about how fast it can leave. Even though I understand you want it to go away, but the mm-hmm. main thing is to ensure that when it leaves, it doesn't come back. This is more mm-hmm. important. It's far more important than, than it just going away fast. Mm-hmm. It can leave fast and come back, you know. So you want mm-hmm. to make sure you the right products. Personally, mm-hmm. say, I can get your typical skin lightener, your aka your skin bleaching cream at, 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 in half a chair, wherever. Mm-hmm. Fine. But these products only cater to just lightening the skin. It does not nourish the skin. It does not protect your skin barriers. Mm-hmm. So I also recommend these products. And the main ingredients in these products is hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is a very effective lightener. This is what is in the, these bleaching agents. And hydroquinone? Hydroquinone. It's That's the like main ingredient. We don't know these big yes, terminologies. Yeah, 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 man. Hydroquinone. And this is a form of tyrosine inhibitors. Tyrosine inhibitors, meaning mm-hmm. that... Um, ingredients that suppress the production of melanin to the skin that mm-hmm. stops the production of melanin to the skin mm-hmm. so the good thing with, with the, the hydroquinone is that it does eliminate the spot and it does it fast but if you stop mm-hmm. using it it can go against your skin the spot can mm-hmm. reoccur and it gets darker if you're not using mm-hmm. it on black so this is why i don't really recommend you just go and you just get a regular skin lightener i prefer for you to get a, a plant-based lightener like a kojic mm-hmm. acid these are plant-based lighteners kojic acid would be good vitamin c would be good your alpha arbitrin acid would be good your niacinamide mm-hmm. acid serum would be good these are all plant-based these are natural and even though they might take a little time to really for for, for the for the era to be re uh the spot to be eliminated right believe they do work once you're consistent and mm-hmm. a small chance little to no chance that the spot will, will occur back on that that area right 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 these okay products yes. nourish the skin as they okay. eliminate the hyperpigmentation this is the difference between these type of products and mm-hmm. the regular lightning agents ones on the market mm-hmm. and it's better to use products that you know will work well instead yes, of something and that will just so work hard because you don't want to be using something that will get rid of the spot but but, but by the time you look you have a little bit of energy. next one. Here. Some yes. red here. Some each. It makes no sense. It defeats the purpose. So why not get okay. something that's, that's going to be nourishing to the skin? To your skin. Right. Very important. Yes. Okay. And just to plug before we go further. All right. So Nikita has her spa. So I'll be leaving the description down below. So she is available to take consultations. So after watching this live, if you have any questions, if you want to have a consultation, I will leave her information down below. She also has her beauty channel here on yes, YouTube. Yes, yes, I'll be yes, leaving yes. the link. Nikita, could you go and type that one down below so I can share it with person so they can see now. So you can check out her beauty channel on YouTube. So if you want any guidance as it relates to skincare, we can provide that for you. All right. And as I said, she does private con- consultation. Oh, I think I lost her. Private consultation. So if you want to know how to care for your skin, if you want to go into her spa and get a treatment done, that can also be arranged. All right. So I think she's back. You're muted. I was trying to, to add the information down below, but right. I'm, I'm not giving the option to type it. You're not getting the... Oh, so could you send me a private message and... um. Sure. I will share it with persons so you can make contact with her. All right. One minute. What's going on here? All right. So. Chat. So right. you're, you're, well, this is for this is for um the, the the channel, right? Right. For both the channel and how they can reach you if okay. they want to do a private consultation or to visit the spa. Let me put the business line here. Let me put the business line here. All right. So let me just paste this. All right. So I have left down below um, Nikita's YouTube channel. So you can check her out at Beauty23 online. So that is her YouTube channel. So you can go over there and become one of her beauty bugs. <laughs> when you check out the channel, you'll understand why I say that. So you can check her out. I think we lost her. So I'm just going to give her a few seconds to rejoin. So as we are here, if you have any beauty related questions, any ladies out there or for the men, any health, not health, skin care question that you would like to ask, Leave a comment down below and um, Nikita will be 
able to answer them as soon as she rejoins. I hope she's not having internet issues. All right, let me see if I can pull her in. Not seeing her as yet. You are welcome. Easy, crazy entertainment. All right, so she is back. Yeah, I don't know why I keep jumping off. Sorry, <laughs> we're back nonetheless. We're back. We are back. We are back. We Where are was back. I, know? I was um you were typing your uh business the information. Right. Yes. So they can find you. Okay, All right, so while she's doing that. I dropped the con I, I dropped the number okay. here. So once they I'm can see it. Uh, WhatsApp. They can uh -huh. list their information they want here. All right. So I'm going to be putting that down below. So before I start yes. that, we can move on to the next question. And while mm -hmm. you answer that question, I'll type in your information down below. All right. All right. So I know a lot of persons will have a number of skin ailments. So I just mm -hmm. want to highlight a few. And I just want you to explain briefly what they are and how persons can treat them. All right. Yes. So dark spots, I know it's a popular one for persons. Mm -hmm. so what are dark spots and how persons can treat dark spots on the face, any part of the body? Okay, dark spots, otherwise known or technically known as post-hyperpigmentation spots on the skin. This is what you get right after you get your breakout. Well, it's caused just by getting a breakout or you're the one that's picking the skin, causing the skin to become irritated. Now, this is this can be hormonally charged. Some persons get dark spots because you're in the sun for too long, they get sunspots. Some persons get dark spots um, during pregnancy or after pregnancy. Ma malesma, which is hormonally charged, where they get that mainly on the skin or even on the chest area. Now, with dark spots, you want to, especially for black skin, you want to be mindful of the products that you're using on the skin because if the skin comes under too much pressure, it will freak out. And when I say freak out, if you're using strong products, it car, harsh products, mm -hmm. it, the, the, the affected area will start to produce more hyperpigmentation mm -hmm. because it is not freaking out and it's under pressure, right? In layman terms, it's under pressure. And once your skin comes under pressure, it produces mm -hmm. more melanin to protect itself. Right, why right. When you have a little irritation, a little burn or stinging or whatever it is, mm -hmm. your ear might, might get a little bit darker. It mm -hmm. pigment melanin to protect to protect itself. So as I was saying before, I listed a few lighteners that you can use on those affected mm -hmm. mainly is to get your sunblock. Once you start using these natural plant-based lighteners, it makes no sense if you have a if you do have a sunblock. The sunblock is pretty much what's going to seal off the deal and, and right. block off, you know, the exposure from the sun. Right, to prevent it from getting darker. Exactly, because the sun causes your melanocytes to become active. Right, but right. Only for too long your skin get darker and it gets darker. It, it being that is not a bad thing because it gets darker to, to protect itself from the old, right? Exposure. But we don't want it to get darker, exactly. so we're skin we free, yeah. We don't, but at the okay. same time, this is your skin's way of protecting itself, just like what, just like what I just said. Once the skin comes under pressure and it's freaking out, mm -hmm. it produces more pigment melanin to protect mm -hmm. itself, right? Do you but, have any natural? sunscreen i don't know that you right. would recommend um no natural sunscreen but there is this one sunscreen that i always recommend which is my go-to mm -hmm. sunscreen because most importantly i realize that this sunscreen is is, is not a bad sunscreen for black mm -hmm. skin mm -hmm. yeah, in mind black skin because some of these sunscreens are not for us so we put it on it has a mm -hmm. white cast look on the skin right that you know that mm -hmm. both purplish look Mm -hmm. so if you start sweating so mm -hmm. there is this brand called biosans it's an international mm -hmm. brand it is a mineral sunscreen mineral mm -hmm. meaning that it is a mixture of chemical and uh, physical sunscreen and mm -hmm. certain ingredients in it that will help mm -hmm. to uh give us that, that 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 translucent look on the skin it doesn't give off that gray cast this white cast look on right, the skin. right 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 when you apply it onto the skin it, it, it dissolves into the skin and mm -hmm. it reflects off the uv relight from the sun that causes okay. the to the skin right so 
the bias aunt in particular i mm-hmm. like that one because it is it is i would say my term it is a good sunblock for our skin type in terms of it won't give off that little ghost look onto the skin mainly because of the ingredients in it the titanium dioxide and the zinc oxide is mm-hmm. really and clones it and cause it to give off that look onto the skin so the okay. bias Bad brand that's the one that you would recommend yes all right so we're going to move on to the next ailment oh i can see altia has a question can stretch marks be removed so we're going to look at stretch marks so tell us about stretch mark and can it be removed sadly it cannot it, it's a permanent scar in the skin but it can be mm-hmm. damaged. it can become unnoticeable Right, mm-hmm. you have a different type of stretch mark. You have the straw, the straw high albra, the straw high rubri. Right, mm-hmm. um, this is the, the, the pink ones. You, you know, those mm-hmm. pink ones that, that, that when you're just getting the stretch mark, they might have a pink mm-hmm. look. Those ones are easier to treat. So, if it's a case where you're experiencing those, it's best to get those treated from early. If it's mm-hmm. the lighter ones, those are the aged ones, those are those are the ones right. that they give you a really serious challenge to really right. diminish. as i said before this is tissue scarring this right. goes this goes below the epidermis this is now scarring in the dermal layer of the skin and the mm-hmm. dermal layer is a live layer of the skin where you have your nerve endings your collagen Ooh, your fibers, yes, the your deep parts of the skin yes your so that's why stretch mark is so hard to get rid of because yes, it's not because just on the surface no it's it's like if you have a paper let, let me give you let me give you a quick analogy all right a quick example of that Sharika. let me get up the paper this wow. is your skin, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's everything. Doesn't matter what you do, you're still gonna have that scar in the middle, that tear in the middle. Even if you do it up, it's always mm-hmm. going to be there. This is the same thing as a stretch mark. The best we can do is get products that will cause it to become not too noticeable. Noticeable. Yes, but it won't go away. Uh, but it will not be removed. Permanently yes, removed. Yes. But some some treatments can help, like your microneedling can help with it. Microneedling, laser, yes, laser mm-hmm. removal treatments can definitely help with that as well. Some persons mm-hmm. say um, the radio frequency treatment helps, where it okay. helps to tighten and tone the skin, the loose right. skin there, right, right. And um, in regards to oil, um, coconut oil, your favorite oil, yes, oil is good for your hair and of course for the body itself. Yes. Like, for the face the coconut oil has antimicrobial properties antibacterial mm-hmm. properties it will definitely help with keeping the skin hydrated your, mm-hmm. your, your, your almond oil as well you know, your mm-hmm. oil, oil. these oils your shea butter coconut yes. butter yes will definitely help with keeping the area um uh, moisturized, moisturized. And really collagen because it's really a lot of collagen in that area you know? because if you notice that specific area where the skin is torn it feels brittle and soft because there's no tissue underneath the, 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 right. uh, the epidermal layer to hold up that specific area. Okay. This is why it has that soft, stretch look. It has no right. support right. from underneath that area. So, because the, the, um, the tissue was torn, it's collagen damage. Do, dandruff. you, do right. you recommend dry brushing for that? Because I, I realize dry brushing is a common dry brushing, but it, it can be a little bit on the dangerous side because it can cause uh, potential irritation onto the skin as well. If it's not done properly, yeah. it can definitely cause potential um, irritation onto the skin. You know what I mean? So my right. goal is always get professional help. Worse if you have no knowledge of it and to keep your skin hydrated. Dryness is one of the main causes for a stretch mark. Once the skin is dehydrated, it cracks. Ooh. Right? Especially if 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 if, if it, once the skin comes under pressure. You know, if you're pregnant, your skin is stretching. If you're mm-hmm. working out and your muscles are building, the skin mm-hmm. comes under pressure. Mm-hmm. Right? It becomes very, very dry and it cracks. So you mm-hmm. want to make sure or tear. So you want to make sure that you're 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 hydrating the skin, you're you're rejuvenating and refreshing that area by using your, your body butters and your moisturizers right. to lock hydration into the skin, right? Okay, so moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Yes, you cannot go around with moisturize. You want to go further than that, seek professional help. Yes, ma'am, because even though it won't go away completely, I will admit, you know, I think the micro, micro leading can go a long way because the micro mm-hmm. leading the collagen induction and it helps mm-hmm. to surface the texture of the skin. And micro needling is that one with the little needle that they... Yes, with the little needles that punches the skin, okay. right? It forms little tiny holes, tiny mm-hmm. cuts into the skin. It pretty much is tricking your body in thinking that you have a cut because naturally right. when you have a cut, your body goes into healing mode. There's right. a cut here. It's your 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 fibroblast cells um sends out connected tissue that allows your skin to start healing. Healing. Now, the trick here 
because it, it, it does this now, it, it, it causes the healing process, to, it induces the healing process because mm-hmm. the healing is the thing that cuts your skin, you know, and it causes your skin to produce fresh skin cells early. Mm-hmm. Early than usual. Mm-hmm. And so when you have a cut, it's fresh skin coming. So the man mm-hmm. punches little tiny holes into the skin, um, mm-hmm. pretty much forcing fresh skins to come out early, right? Mm-hmm. Um, with, with tighter pores. And right, pores, right. This will help to resurface the texture of the stretch mark. It won't go away completely, but it does help to an extent. Okay. So yes, microneedling is one treatment. to consider and laser treatment. Yeah, man. Right. Laser is way more intense. Laser resurfacing does help as well. All right. So I think we would have touched on this one a little bit. Scars. Okay, so you have two main types of scarring. You have mm-hmm. depressed scarring and you have uh, ray scarring. Now, scarrings are caused mainly by you getting uh, post inflammatory, well, yes, post hyperpigmentation, which is uh, our post inflammation, inflammation, okay. which is you, you having acne onto the skin, and after the acne is gone, you have the spots to deal with. We're talking about I'm not talking about your regular coma donor acne, but regular mm-hmm. black and white don't, Those don't normally give you no, 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 no scarring. Those are regular mm-hmm. black and white heads. We're talking about your, 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 um, your inflamed acne, the ones that mm-hmm. the pus in them and around the area is inflamed. Your cystic acne is your nodule and your, your, your um, acne is that don't have a head. They're under the skin and they're hard, mm-hmm. they're hard and they're tender. Mm-hmm. Those tend to leave scarring onto the skin why is because once the acne go away it depends on the healing process it all depends on the mm-hmm. skin, it depends on the healing process once the acne go away the skin start to heal um the tissue can become damaged during the process depending on how you handle the acne while it was there so if you irritated it a lot if you cut it a mm-hmm. lot you're picking it you can cause potential uh, scarring onto the skin <coughs> yes okay. you can cause potential scarring onto the skin right Mm-hmm. So you want to make sure that when you have the acne, you'll be mindful of all of these stuff. You have your depressed scarring, as I said before, and then you have your ray scarring. Ray scarring would be like keloid skin, you know those fat skin. Okay. Skin? Yes. And, yes. and this is when there's too much collagen going into that specific area. And this is why you have the ray scarring. And studies have shown that African Americans, Caribbean peoples, Asian people, and Hispanic people tend to have this issue. I'll hold With keloids. Mm-hmm tend to have this issue and then um the white ethnicity people the, the you know white person in particular caucasian they mm-hmm. tend to be on the depressed side where they have the indenture into the skin as well the depressed scar okay. we're just, that i was just talking about right mm-hmm. so you okay. want to be mindful of when you have this issue be mindful of how you're treating the skin around that time mm-hmm. right okay <laughs> all right and then you want to get some water I'm good now, man. I just had a little bit of a Just to let persons who are joining us know that we are not talking about anything real estate this evening or no, anything about any house this evening. We are self caring. So yes, we are yeah. here and we're talking about skin care and taking care of your skin. So we are diverting a bit this evening and doing something different. Thanks to Mr. Prime Minister. We are now <laughs> at home on lockdown. So we are still hearing today, all right? <laughs> all right, so the next one, I know a lot of women have these issues with the dark circles under their eyes. Mm-hmm. How can they take care of this? All right, so first things first, the skin on our face is the most sensitive skin on our body. The, the skin around the eye, around the orbital mm-hmm. bone, right around the orbital bone around here is the sensitive skin on our face, right? Mm-hmm. And this area does not produce it, it, its own oil or it mm-hmm. get hydrated off its own. So you're prone to have discoloration around that area or you might have some dilated cap- capillaries around that area where you have little small veins or irritation around that area. And that this can lead to darkness. What, another thing that can lead to the darkness around the area as well is um, lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. blood circulation as well so you want to um what i'd recommend is person can get eye creams or eye gels or if, mm-hmm. if you're a DIY person like sharika here yes i yes, think coffee can help coffee, coffee okay coffee, coffee is a form of antioxidant I think mm-hmm. like green tea can help or if you can get some um vitamin c eye patch that you, mm-hmm. you know you have those little eye patch right, things, right. Like and the eye patch you can right. you have them in the vitamin c form the vitamin mm-hmm. c is a uh, uh, also, a, a natural form of lighten as well. Mm-hmm. This comes under the, 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 the citric acid brand. This mm-hmm. is family, 
where it, it helps with lightening discoloration around certain areas. The vitamin C is safe enough to put around the eye area. You, you also want to be mindful of what can go too close to your eye and what cannot go close to your eye. The coffee is not bad and the green tea also is mild as well, as well as the vitamin C. So okay. these um, causes um, discoloration if, if mm -hmm. you're not sleep. If your blood circulation mm -hmm. around the eye is, is poor, and, mm -hmm. and, and of course, in some persons, this can be genetic for them. We mm -hmm. in their gene to have dark circles around the eye. But you do have mm -hmm. eye creams and eye gel that can help. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the gel over the cream because mm -hmm. the cream absorbs the gel faster. But your okay. focus, yeah, it would be more effective around that area. Your, your hyaluronic gel, hyaluronic acid gel, your vitamin mm -hmm. C eye gel, these will have mm -hmm. discoloration around the area. What yeah. about persons who normally have on the cucumber slices over the eye? Does that help? Yeah. Well, I mean, to an extent, you know, because the, the cucumber do has skin soothing properties in, in it as mm -hmm. well. The cucumber do does help with um, you know, um, pulling down inflammation around the area. It does help mm -hmm. with discoloration to an extent, but sometimes mm -hmm. it does something that would boost it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you, sometimes it, it's best to get to, to get a little uh, uh, um, professional help or get something over the counter, like a little IV. Because I mean, it will help, you know. But if you're like me, you want you want the full effectiveness of whatever you're doing. You want it all and cutting. <laughs> yes. I mean, okay. Yeah, you can you, you can get a little eye cream that will definitely help with um you know resetting around the eye area. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I hope that helps for the persons out there who may be having that kind of issue. So you can try your DIY, such as your coffee and your cucumber and so on, or you can go. You can try it because, it, um, I mean, if it doesn't work for you, that means it won't work for me. You know, we're all different. Right. Works, you know what I mean? So it's nothing. Everybody's skin is different. You know, it's safe to try. Right. right. And it's, it, the coffee is okay for the eye. The cucumber is okay for the eye. The vitamin C is okay for the eye. Right. Okay. Right. right. Okay. All right, so we're going to move on to the next question. Hyperpigmentation. I know that's a big one. Most persons, or maybe not most, but a lot of persons suffer from hyperpigmentation. What is hyperpigmentation and how may we treat it? You know, we, we, we're going to treat this already, but I, I'll leave again. Hyper, yes, hyperpigmentation is pretty much skin discoloration. We, we spoke about okay. that earlier. Yes. Yeah, man, um, whether it be the spots or the scarring, this can be caused from the sun, as we said before, because mm -hmm. the, the, the melanocytes in our skin mm -hmm. can be caused by melasma, which is hormonal. Mm -hmm. If you're pregnant, you know, some persons might have a little bit of black patch here. here. Mm -hmm. Yes, man, it's hormonal changes into the body that causes that. And you have... um. um you have um if it's not post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation which is what you get after you get acne right. you have pi which is a post-inflammatory erythema which is almost a little bit like acne but it's 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 tend to have that inflame red pinkish look onto the skin as mm -hmm. well so as i said before the, 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 the lightness that i listed before can definitely help with these your sunblock can help with these mm -hmm. and you want to be you want to make sure that you're not using too much, too much harsh products on the skin. And right. What, whatever products that you're using, they you, you're not using too much products that have too much active ingredients, and they can clash mm -hmm. onto the skin. So if you already right. have product, if you already have a product that have a little bit of um a little bit of BPO in it or a little bit of mm -hmm. acid, you don't need to go get one that has some lactic in it or some glycolic. They are all active ingredients and. If they are clashing together, they can come against each other and they mm -hmm. can put irritation onto the skin because you're not sure as to what how much your skin can manage. Right, so, right. So before less is always more. More. Mm -hmm. Once you give them time gap, you'll be mm -hmm. able to, to, to analyze and see what really works for you and give mm -hmm. your skin to really digest these products. Right. Okay. All but right. At the end of the day, more sunblock, sunblock. Sunblock. Yes. <laughs> all right okay so I that's a really that's head sun black sharika <laughs> <laughs> black people <laughs> you you say sun black black they always say black don't crack black don't crack. <laughs> it just, it's just that we crack a little bit later than the rest but we do crack. so oh my god that's first thing. so get sun black yes whether <laughs> you're black white pink purple you need sun yes. black you need protection from the sun all right, so this is one that I know a lot of persons have, including myself. Mm -hmm. I am not remembering the scientific terminology for this one, but I know persons refer to it as um, chicken skin. Oh, chicken skin. Uh, KP, yes. Caritotis pilaris. Or That's it. Yes, or 
I was told I have that. Yes. But I only remember the chicken skin part. That's that, that's a long name. Chicken skin or strawberry skin. That person. Or skin. strawberry skin. Yes. yes. But, but the, scientific, the scientific term is keratosis pilaris or follicular keratosis. No, this yes. is really the main cause of this is dry skin. Dry oh lord. Skin really irritates and exasperates keratosis. Mm-hmm. Right, because this is the buildup of keratinocytes in your skin, and it's mm-hmm. densely packed into the skin, mm-hmm. and there's no room for the skin to pretty much breathe in layman terms, mm-hmm. and cause the skin to become dry. No, mm-hmm. if you're in a cold area, if you're living in an environment where it's, it's cold most of the time, you want to make sure that your skin is always moisturized. Mm-hmm. Right? And, but, uh, and even if you're living in the Caribbean, the good thing is that once you're in the heat, it's more. Ma- it, you will have it, but it's going to be more manageable. Mm-hmm. If you're living in an hot area because mm-hmm. you can't say you're, you're probably secreting oil or perspiration from the body. But the main thing is to keep the body moisturized mm-hmm. when you access this area and exfoliate. You can use a lactic, okay. uh, yes, a, a lactic acid body wash to exfoliate the dead skin cell mm-hmm. and you're exfoliating scrub gloves and you exfoliate it while you're in the shower. Or you can you can create your own, like Miss DIY over here, your own DIY scrub. Yeah. Okay, sugar scrub for the body or your turmeric or whatever you want to put in your coffee scrub so mm-hmm. to remove it, the dead skin cell as i said mm-hmm. it's really the dead skin cell that's that is densely packed oh in skin. i packed have that tissue on my leg yes I'm you have to keep it hydrated. and trust me once you keep it hydrated and you keep it um and you exfoliate it uh, at least uh, exfoliate in the show at least maybe like three times out of the week or you know four mm-hmm. if you want to you will I'm not saying it will, it will disappear, but you will see a drastic change. Okay. I had my leg, you know, keyword had it. And has. It has, yes, it has diminished. And mm-hmm. this is a chronic condition, meaning that there's no there's no cure for it. It will mm-hmm. reoccur, but the goal is to learn how to manage it when it comes back around. Okay. Right. So you say exfoliate and moisturize. Mainly, yes. Okay. So I need to work on that. Mm-hmm. And I just exfoliate my leg. I don't know. It's just on my legs. Yeah, man. It's yeah, man. The main area spread to occur is on the legs, on the back of the thigh, on the buck cheek, and on the back of the hands here. Those are the main okay. not the ears, but those are the main areas. Main areas. Mm-hmm. All right. So exfoliate. Yeah, man. Studies have also shown that um at least three million black people in particular develop this condition every year. Wow. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Wow, so exfoliate and hydrate, all right? Yes. You have, what's the scientific ner- name? Stra- for strawberry skin? Keratotis pilaris or <laughs> follicular keratotis. Okay, yeah. so for the ladies out there who suffer from that condition like myself, when you look on your legs, when you shave, you see some, some small holes yes. like on the skin. Yes, that's what we are talking about. So yeah, as was said, I, I I forgot to pretty much explain what it was. It's really right. nice. it's pretty much the, the buildup of dead skin cells around mm-hmm. your, your hair follicles, and it right, forms right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And, and they say sometimes, um, as I was told, maybe I'm over shaving. Oh, so well, I mean, me? um, the shaving can be a contributing factor to it because it depends on how you shave the area still because. Mm-hmm. It, if you're shaving with, 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 with a razor that is, is breaking the ear and the skin and causing it to become blunt on the surface, chances are it will go over and pierce the skin. It will mm-hmm. pierce the skin around that area and it can mm-hmm. be clogged into the pore. So right. it, it, it can contribute to that, but as, as well as not necessarily because this is really a condition too. So whether you shave your leg or not, mm-hmm. some persons will, will, will develop this condition. Okay, and we will talk a little bit about shaving in just a minute so don't want to jump the gun about that one we have one next skin ailment to talk about and this one is liver spots what are liver spots and how do we treat them liver spots otherwise known as lentigus senilasis lentigo senilasis no this is otherwise known as age spots right and this is really caused by the studies have also shown that the sun really contributes to this some Mm -hmm. most persons do have it in the hyperpigmentation form where mm-hmm. it's darker, while some mm-hmm. is in hypopigmentation form where it's lighter. Right? Mm-hmm. But most persons, especially black persons, tend to be darker in certain areas. And mm-hmm. before persons treat this the way they would treat a uh, typical hyperpigmentation. Mm-hmm. Lighteners around the area, some plant-based liners to, to, to help um diminish the darkness of the liver spot around that area. 
Okay. Just more studies on this though. On that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think that covers the skin ailments that we have. I'm seeing a question here from Siobhan. Good night. How to remove blackheads and breakouts. I think you would have spoken about that, but I think he came late. So can you oh, just okay. repeat what we had said about okay. treating right. yeah, blackheads? Yeah, man, when you have blackheads on the skin, this is the pretty, pretty much the built-up of mixture of dead skin cells, bacteria, and sebum. So you want to make sure that you're using some anti-blackheads or anti-acne ingredients. As I as I shown uh, Mr. Rika here earlier, something that has a little bit of salicylic acid, this is my go-to because this is one of the number one things that help with uh, decongesting your pores and dissolve mm -hmm. the bacteria that causes the blackhead. So you can use a little bit of salicylic acid in the area, a little bit of lactic acid in the area, uh, some BPO, these all, these, these all kill bacteria, right? But you want to make sure also that you have a, a, a very stable skincare routine with your cleanser, your moisturizer, and your sunblock. And then, then you can infuse your active in between, your 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 acne, your salicylic acid, or your BPO that will help with, with um the breakout, or a little bit of tea tree oil as well. What was the other part of the question that this young man asked? He asked, so can you remove them? Well, I guess I would have answered it. I would have you. answered. Yeah, and of course, some things do require uh, the, the physical touch. So if you mm -hmm. can get a hold of book an appointment at, to, to, to see a skin specialist and esthetician to, to give you a nice deep cleaning facial that will also help as well to do, to do some physical extractions. Okay. Okay. All right. So I would have typed that in the chat for him to make reference to. Yes. All right. So thank you so much for answering that one. Yes. All right, so we were talking about um, shaving a while ago. Mm -hmm. What is your view on shaving and waxing? Which one do you think is okay. better? As, as much as all the waxing, uh, uh, the waxing is better. The waxing right. is better because you have a lesser chance of getting irritation. You do get irritation because everything depends on our skin typing and how our skin mm -hmm. to it. It might work for me as well as it might not work for you. Mm -hmm. But the waxing is better in my reason being because once you constantly wax, you find that the hair will grow less and less and less. Mm -hmm. you know? And the waxing also mm -hmm. causes the hair to take a longer time to grow back, which is yeah. all good. You know, mm -hmm. It keeps the area smooth and clean, and it pulls the hair, the hair from the follicle, from the root. Mm -hmm. shaving. It does not remove the hair from the root. It does, you clip off what is visible on the, on the outer layer of the skin. Right? Mm -hmm. so if you're using certain type of razors, it causes the, the end to become blunt. And then this can develop into a uh, folliculitis where you mm -hmm. have an inflow and flame um air follicle. This right. pierces the skin, this pierces the skin um around the, the, the affected area and it causes inflammation around the skin. Ooh. Yes, my how do you moving, treat folliculitis? Yes, we're moving oh. into now pseudo folliculitis where we have ingrown hair, right? Ooh. Once it once you've shaved and it pierces the skin around that area. Mm -hmm. And it causes inflammation, and you're going to mm -hmm. get ingrown here, otherwise known as pseudo folliculitis. So, this mm -hmm. is why I prefer the waxing, even though it might, the process might hurt, it, mm -hmm. it does help, uh, um, in terms of not having to deal with any of that, uh, uh, side effect. So, how do you treat folliculitis? All right, when you have pseudo folliculitis, you want to make sure that you, you it's this is pretty much like acne still, you know, because we're right. talking about bacteria condition into the ear because mm -hmm. everything pierces the skin. Mm -hmm. the hair, sorry, pierces the skin, right? Mm -hmm. and it becomes inflamed. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a bad thing, though, because right. what happened now. Um, your 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 body is now detecting foreign pathogen in the area, right? Bacteria, no bacteria into the area, so it sends for your white blood skin cells now mm -hmm. for help. And your white blood skin cells comes to combat the bacteria in that area, um, which is caused by the piercing of the skin. Um, it, it combats it by by um, sending out some information around the ear. Even the information can be a little bit tender and it hurts mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. we want to use um, some acne wash, like you just like, like what I said, some a little bit of glycolic uh, acid wash or a little bit of lactic mm -hmm. body wash help to exfoliate the area. And also, person scan before getting into the shower, even after coming out of the shower or whatever, you can get a, a warm rag and damp the, the affected area. Damp mm -hmm. it. Just mm -hmm. you shave it. Mm -hmm. Shave it. Damp it. And what's what's gonna happen is that the, the hair will swell. Mm -hmm. so, so when okay. you're shaving it, it has a little chance of being blunt. 
So the, oh. the, the lesser chance of it being blonde is the lesser chance of it piercing. So dry skin. shaving is not something you recommend? No. Mm -mm. Okay. You have a very high chance of getting your breakout there once you're you're doing your dry shaving. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is why I prefer the, the waxing. It might hurt during the process, but you you really mm -hmm. have a, a lot to deal with once you you wax and you do your after wax treatment. You know, you get your skin soothing lotion or whatever it is mm -hmm. that it gives you, and your mm -hmm. versus having to be with this ingrown that, that might linger for a couple of weeks. And of course, once it's gone, it leaves you with hyperpigmentation. Okay. <laughs> yes. See, I you. All, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's a thumbs up for the waxing. Yes. <laughs> All I right. It hurts, you know, but it, 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 it's made better. Okay. Okay. Beauty pains. Yes, it does. <laughs> All right. So um, I think we'd have covered all the questions on the list so before we wrap up i would just want for you to provide the viewers with your final tips and anything that you would want to leave with them before you go okay sure let me talk uh, some some hacks right some quick right hacks. yes okay. no one of my number one hacks is this sounds cliche this sounds regular but listen to me wash your hands before you cleanse your face. It sounds cliche, but a lot of us don't spend time to do it properly. You want it, because remember, you know, you're using your hands to do pretty much everything from the ground up. You're using mm -hmm. your these products, apply them onto the face. If your hands mm -hmm. are clean, you're depositing mm -hmm. bacteria not only on your face, but you're mm -hmm. spending into your products as well, depending on mm -hmm. who, are, who you're using the products. So mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you wash your hands at least three to four times before, mm -hmm. before you, you apply anything onto the face. Once you right. wash your hands enough time, you will know, meaning that once you're mm -hmm. showing up your hands and if you're, mm -hmm. if you're if enough bubbles formed on the hands, you know that your hands is clean. So if you're washing and there's no bubbles being formed, you're still dirt and bacteria. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you wash your hands properly. Next thing's next. Cleanse your face for no less than 60 to 45 seconds. Why? The cleanser is the only product that we really? use that don't get enough time to, 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 to work on the face, right? Because in a real world, persons put on a cleanser for, 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 for five seconds, bop, 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 them finish. Mm -hmm. No. Spend time to cleanse your face properly. Get into your hairline, your hair shaft, around your hair temple, right around your zygomatic bone, under the chin, mm -hmm. hair, between your nose, areas in which you would normally go into. You want to make sure mm -hmm. you're spending time. There's this esthetician on, on uh, YouTube. Her name is Ellen Utiology. She developed this 60 second rules and it makes sense. It does help because persons tend to cleanse the face for like five seconds or 10 seconds and that is it. The cleanser don't get enough time to do justice onto the skin. So you want to make sure you see it. I appreciate the honesty, Sharika. So you want to, and I, that used to be me also. You want to make sure that you 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 cleanse the face properly. You spend time to get into ear and to, into it. And you'll be mm -hmm. surprised to see the difference in the texture of your skin and less break. Yes. Third things third, you want to make sure that wherever you're resting, this is my go-to, go-to, go-to. Mm -hmm. Wherever you're resting your face, the area should be literally clean. What do I mean by this? In our real world, nobody's not, not going to change pillowcase every day. But what mm -hmm. I recommend is put a fresh rag, fresh cloth, fresh towel on your pillowcase to with, um, before you go, before once you're going to bed, rather. If you can do it every mm -hmm. night, every other night, you get a specific material, specific cloth, which I will jump into shortly. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is your face rag or your face towel that like you rest your face. Mm -hmm. but remember, you know, there's a lot of dust mite pollutants out of the atmosphere that's lingering into the atmosphere that we cannot see with our naked eyes. Right. And believe it or not, we also have dead skin cells in the atmosphere because remember when our skin um is going through that 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 cellular turnover process, mm -hmm. the, the dead skin cells is being secreted. And mm -hmm. it's it, it's been disseminated into the atmosphere. So you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you, wherever you're putting your face, wherever surface you're going to be putting your face, it's clean. Mm -hmm. and for the material, mm -hmm. I'd prefer silk. So if you could, if, if you have like a silk material, a silk pillow place, use that because silk is hygienic. It helps to regulate the temperature into the skin. So maybe mm -hmm. that you have a little chance of getting breakouts onto the skin. Just like our silk bonnet is good for the hair because it prevents mm -hmm. breakage. Right, so right, right. It, it prevents breakage. In so you must, must sleep on silk. Yes, <laughs> fine cloth. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you put silk on your sleep <laughs> on the silk because this helps to, to regulate the temperature into your skin. Why the cotton is out of the picture is because the cotton is more absorbent. So whatever okay. is coming out of our hair on our skin, it stays mm -hmm. and it's been the, the, mm -hmm. um, deposited, back, deposited back onto the skin. 
So you okay. want to make sure that you wash your hands properly. You do the 60 second rule. And of course, you try your best to get silk cloth. Is at the fabric store. I have silk cloth. I just buy a few pieces and I cut them up like towels or make them mm-hmm. and sleep on it. And it does help. Keep it clean. This is where you're putting your face. Separate your mm-hmm. face stuff from your body stuff. Your face rug, your face um, products, differently from mm-hmm. your body products. All right. So those okay. are my three hacks that I, those are my three go to general hacks that I would tell mm-hmm. anybody that's entering into the skincare world. All right. So I'm just going to repeat it for those persons who yes. probably come late. So Nikita's top three that she's leaving with us, her skin hacks. Wash your hands before you touch any part of your yes. skin. If yes. you want to wash your yes. skin, wash your hands first. Ensure your hands are clean. Hack number two, practice the 60 second rule. Yes. So like me who wash my face for two seconds. <laughs> Scrub yourself for 60 seconds. That way you get out the dirt and the grime. Right. So right. practice the 60 seconds rule. And number three, when you go into your bed. Sleep softly on silk. And <laughs> silk. Sleep yes. softly on silk. I like, yes. I like that term. I like that term, Sherika. So you can get notes. some silk and put it over your pillowcase, and that will help make the area more soft and breathable for your skin. All right. So this is where we're going to leave the live tonight. I just want to say thank you for all those who would have joined in. And for those who would have asked their question, this is our first live here on Just Sherika. But it will definitely not be the last. And we did something totally different from the norm tonight. We're taking care of ourselves. And as was said earlier, our skin is our largest organ. It's it all is. over our it body. Is. We really need to take care of it. And that is why we took the time out tonight to hear from the professional who is licensed and trained in skincare so who else to give you such information right so we're gonna ask nikita again to tell us where we can find her so for those out there who want to get treatment and a consultation tell us where we can find you so we're we would be usually located at nine Rivers Road, but we're in the midst of relocating. So right. our new location is, is not disclosed as it. Nonetheless, mm-hmm. we do offer online services where we have mm-hmm. recommendation sessions, online consultation mm-hmm. where we help you to construct your skincare routine, help mm-hmm. you to start your skincare journey. Because for me, the most the most important thing is to teach my clients how to become skincare independent. Because mm-hmm. I, I I am not one of those persons that I can be everywhere all at once. That's right, not, right. But therefore. I, I'll teach them how to manage their skin um, at home properly and to become independent in that aspect mm-hmm. of their life. And also, we do have uh, DIY sessions where for persons like you that like like your DIY stuff, yes. we show you how to use those products, how to properly lay them onto the skin to use the right proportion. All mm-hmm. of them there. So, how, how how can I get onto that? I would be interested in that. Is there a cost? Um, there's there, there's a cost that, that is attached to it. It's usually a fifteen hundred GMD dollars. Um, Jamaican money. Yes. Yeah, okay, man, that's not bad. It's, yeah, man, it's it's not a, a long session. It's maybe mm-hmm. like thirty to forty five minutes, but there's a lot right. that can be done within that that time. You know what I mean? So it's usually. And what are what are the days that you have that session? We have that session right throughout the week. It it, de- it depends on um how the courses are lined up, and it depends on right. the and their availability. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but our, our main days are from Monday straight back to uh Thursday. But we do mm-hmm. we're thinking about opening up for the weekend as well. We, we do right, right. Normally. But you know that we have to bear in mind we, we have to uh you know have leniency. Some persons do work right throughout the weekend, they're only available on right. the weekend. So we are trying to, to adjust the schedule the schedule in a way where everybody gets gets a piece of the pie. Right. So we're definitely working on that. But if you're interested more, anybody's interested, they can use the damn the the, the, the number it's at their disposal, right. and we can right, definitely right. construct um the session. We we we've gone through a few of them, and I'm mm-hmm. constructing some more for April, so we can see what can become of that. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So for those of you who are out there and you are interested in getting in contact with Nikita. I will leave her information again. It's already there, but I will leave it again. And I will leave it in the description of the video for those who are watching after the live. 
and you can contact her if you want to get a consultation you want to visit the spa for a treatment <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to do um, one of those DIY sessions, right, right, contact right, right. and she will let you know what to do and how to get it done. All right, so thank you so much, Nikita, for taking the time out. I know you have another session right after yes, this, so I won't I do be any I longer. Do. I do. <laughs> so she's a very, very busy woman. She's yeah, working on her Monday, can I tell you? It's an honor. It's been an honor to join you tonight, Sherika. I must say it, it, it was right. time well spent, you know, with such substantial information that we have to give to the public. Trust me. It was right. really mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Nikita. So we're going to end this live. Thank you so much to all of those you, of you who are watching. All right. So I will see you all on my next video. Stay tuned for that. All right. Never Sherika, be. Just, just Sherika. All right. Take care, guys. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>